Aloha! We're here at the Lagos bus station and we're going to take a three and a half hour bus ride to Lisbon. It'll cost us 29 euro round trip per person and although we've been up there before for business and meetups, we're really excited to focus our time on touring the city and sampling what Lisbon has to offer. So we hope you'll tag along with us as we explore the beautiful city of Lisbon. There are so many things to do in Lisbon. In order to be efficient in exploring the city, we've grouped together the things that we've done by neighborhood or by route to give you some ideas when planning your first visit to this beautiful city. Number one, visit Belém. We really thought our time was well spent visiting Belém. The two UNESCO World Heritage Sites are both located here as well as the Monument of Discoveries, Pedral dos Descobrimentos and of course the famous Pastais de Belém. The Geronimus Monastery is an UNESCO World Heritage Cultural Site and due to its popularity requires the purchase of a 12 euro ticket with a designated time for entry in order to tour the cloisters. We recommend buying your ticket online to save the wait at the ticket kiosks. Once you get through the cloister entrance line, you are immediately captivated by the paintings and colorful ceiling detail as you walk up the stairs which brings you to the first floor of the cloisters where you can enjoy the view of the courtyard and admire the Gothic and Manueline details and the supporting architectural buttresses. Making our way to the ground floor, our eyes were drawn to the Fonte de Leal as we wandered around the cloisters. This monastery took over a hundred years to complete, commissioned by King Manuel I in the 16th century, and donated to the monks of St. Hieronymus, who are also famous for creating the recipe for Pashtais de Belém, which we will sample a little later in this video. It was so great to explore such a well-preserved structure, which perpetuates the rich history of Portugal's Age of Discoveries. If you have time, it is worthwhile to wait in a separate free entrance line to view the Igreja Santa Maria de Belém. Don't make the same mistake we did standing in this line thinking it was to get into the monastery cloisters. The Igreja is a magnificent example of Manueline architecture from the towering columns to the buttresses supporting the ceiling to the colorful stained glass windows, it was beautiful to behold. The artwork displayed behind the altar leading up to the painted ceiling also caught our attention. And don't forget to see the tomb of Vasco da Gama and Louis de Camões, the national poet whom we almost missed shortly after we entered. The Pedral dos Descobrimentos, also known as the Monument of the Discoveries, was first erected in 1940 for the Portugal World Exhibition. At the time, it was built as a temporary structure, but in 1960, it was reconstructed to mark 500 years since the death of Henry the Navigator. The monument is 52 meters tall, and the entry to go to the viewing point at the top is 5 euros, the elevator takes you to the sixth level from which you climb two more levels of stairs to the top. The views are spectacular from there and totally worth it. Facing north, you get a 180 degree view from the Tower of Belém in the west to the Belém Cultural Center, the Geronimus Monastery with the Estadio do Castelo in the backdrop sweeping around to Old Town Lisbon. Facing south, you see the River Tagus, the Crystal Ray statue, and the 25th of April Bridge. We think the most amazing view, though, is looking down at the giant mosaic compass map of the world. On the ground, you can walk the roots of the discoverers on this giant mosaic and see the dates of when new lands were sighted. In the 19th century, next to the Geronimus Monastery, there existed a sugar refinery attached to a small general store. 
It was here where when the monasteries in Portugal were shut down in 1834, that in an attempt to survive, someone from the monastery first offered sweet pastries for sale at the store. These pastries became so popular that they began baking these pastéis de Belém in the buildings attached to the refinery. The secret recipe is only known to the master confectioners of the pastéis de Belém and has remained unaltered since its creation. At the front entrance, there is a line for customers who wish to place takeaway orders and another line for those who wish to be seated. We opted for the latter as we were ready for a break from our touring. Highlights include the cappuccino with fresh whipped cream, a palmier, and of course, pastiche de Belém. We're here at Pastais de Belém, and I remember the last time we were here, their Pastais de Belém were really good, so I'm really looking forward to trying it again, especially after touring all day long. So anyway, I'd like to add a little bit of cinnamon to my Pastais, and I uh, really like the caramelization here. And um, so let's get these uh, little guys to try here, see if they're as good as I remember. Nice crunch to the crust. Really like the cream filling. It's warm still, so they must be making them up pretty fresh. And I like it. It's real creamy. You know how some of them, the inside starts to coagulate. I don't know if it's more pudding-like or whatever, but these are really smooth and creamy. So I have a feeling these are going to be my favorite. You should try one. The Tower of Belém is the other UNESCO World Heritage Cultural Site. It can be reached by taking the 15E from Praça da Figueira and takes about 45 minutes to get to the Largo Princesa stop closest to the tower. It's about a 10 minute walk to the tower using an overpass to cross over the busy Avenida Brasilia and the train tracks. We recommend buying your 8 euro ticket online to avoid lines at the ticket booth. Keep in mind that you will have a long wait just to enter the monument. The wait can be upwards of 2 hours to get in so you may want to line up well before the monument opens. Keep in mind that to reach the various floors of the high tower, there are 93 winding high steps and no lifts inside. During the Age of Discoveries, King Dom Zhao II took the initiative to protect Lisbon and the surrounding territory by designing and implementing a triple-pronged defense strategy which consisted of the Tower of Belém, the Fortress of San Sebastian, and the Cascais Fortress at the mouth of the Rio Tejo. When we first crossed the drawbridge to enter the castle, we found ourselves on the lower level bastion armed with 17 cannons positioned to defend against enemy ships entering the Rio Tejo. Making our way up the first flight of stairs, we found ourselves on the upper bastion terrace shaped in a hexagon with overhanging turrets in each of the corners. Peering through the surrounding terrace wall, we could see the Monument of Discoveries, the 25th of April Bridge, and the Christ the King statue in the distance. At the base of the bastion, we could admire the Manueline architecture of the five-story tower and the intricate detail of the Virgin of Belém and the baby Jesus sculpted into the Pedra Lios. Having made our way to the second floor, we were rewarded with the most spectacular views from the balcony facing out over the terrace. We eventually made our way to the chapel on the top floor and were blown away with the use of detailed interconnecting ribs supporting the vaulted ceiling. Unfortunately, the rooftop terrace is no longer accessible. One last tip is to save your selfie pics at the entrance to the end when you will have a better chance of not being photobombed. And finally, if you have a few extra minutes, walk next door to view the changing of the guards at the Museum of Combatants. Number 2. Alfama. Alfama is one of Europe's oldest neighborhoods. It has been occupied by various people groups since the Iron Age. Romans, Visigoths, Moors, and Jews all settled in the Alfama throughout history until the Portuguese kingdom recaptured Lisbon in 1147. 
The Alfama, unlike many other parts of Lisbon, was not critically damaged by the Great Earthquake of 1755. Alfama is a hillside neighborhood bounded by Baixa, Graça, and the Teju River. There are several ways to get to Alfama, tram, bus, and foot. Use a combination to access the major sites of Alfama, the Castelo of San Jorge, the Miradores, and the Lisbon Cathedral. For an iconic ride up the Alfama, take Tram 28 from Praça Martín Moniz, which is a short walk from Praça da Figueira. Plan to take the early tram to avoid long lines, as the tram is popular with tourists. As a side note, there are many warnings about pickpockets on this tram, so be mindful of your belongings. While waiting for the tram, enjoy taking a look at the Praça with its depiction of the castle wall and moat memorializing the historic actions of Martín Moniz in the retaking of the castle from the Moors. The tram will wind its way up and down hills and through narrow streets, passing through the Graça neighborhood until entering Alfama. Exit the tram at Largo Porta Sol. From this exit, you can view the Miradores, walk to the castle, or head down to the Lisbon Cathedral. For a more direct route to the castle, ride bus 737 from Praça de Figueira directly to the castle. If you enjoy leisurely sightseeing, take a 20 minute stroll from the Praça Figueira to the Miradores Santa Luisa and then follow the signs to continue on to the castle. The Castello de São Jorge, sitting atop the highest hill in Lisbon, is the restored version of the Moorish castle. The castle had undergone years of modifications and decay, with restorations beginning as early as the 1930s. During peak tourist season, the lines for tickets to enter the castle wind down the street, so it is best to buy tickets online using the Castello de São Jorge official website. Upon entering the main gate, enjoy the castle garden and the wide, expansive views of the city. Wander around the grounds, encountering peacocks along the way. Walk along the walls and climb some of the ten towers for spectacular views of Lisbon and the Teju River. After touring the castle, head back down to the Miradores, Miradores Santa Luisa and Largos Portas do Sol. The views here are spectacular any time of day. Enjoy the view from under the vine-covered pergola at the Miradores Santa Luisa, enjoying the musicians that often play there. The Miradora is at the side of the Igreja Santa Luisa. Both the Miradora and the Igreja are covered with azulejos tiles to enjoy. Largo's Portas de Sol is a simple open space whose views are just as spectacular as those of Santa Luisa. There are little places to have coffee and restaurants to sit and enjoy the view. We enjoyed the sunset from Sol Restaurant et Jardim, a nice way to enjoy the view and avoid some of the crowds at the Miradores. Heading down the hill from the Miradores, stop by the Lisbon Cathedral. The cathedral is considered the oldest church in the Portuguese capital, with construction beginning in 1147. The cathedral has undergone many changes and restorations, finally being classified as a national monument in 1910. Continuing farther down the hill along Rua de Madalena, back toward Praça Figueira, make a stop at Solar de Madalena for the best bufana in town view the Cimmerine pan from the window and head in for a treat. Well, so we're here at Solar de Madalena and they specialize in bifadas and um, we're passing by and in the window they have um, a lady making the bifadas so um, we're going to give a traditional bifada a try. What I have here is um, the bifada with keju and uh, Terry here has one that's just a classic. It's just got um, the meat, the sauce. Ooh, you can see all the steam, so be careful, don't burn your lips off. And uh, mine here, it's got the cheese. So usually they put a little bit of mustard on it. I like pity pity, so I'm gonna do the pity pity sauce. And do you want any on yours? I'll wait for you to give me the test. Right, well, it's kind of connected. Let me give this a try. I've been looking forward to this. Oh, that pork is juicy. Mm. Two thumbs up for the fauna. Finally, finish the day with a wonderful dinner at Lugar Mercado. The proprietor is welcoming and friendly, speaking multiple languages. 
we dined at Lugar Mercado on more than one occasion to enjoy their take on traditional Portuguese food. The menu offering is eclectic and the wines enjoyable. The proprietor has a large selection of wines, ensuring a perfect pairing with your meal. A delectable starter is the pica pau do lombo, accompanied with a green salad. We also ordered a side of polenta and were pleasantly surprised by the delicate crispy texture and the flavor. For seafood, we sampled the octopus with olive oil and garlic. It was tender and delicious. We also tried the John Dory fillets in a light butter sauce. The most interesting way to arrive at Lugar Mercado is to climb the stairs Escadinhas de Sao Cristobal from Rua de Madalena, passing by the graffiti art Fado Vadio. Musicians often play along the stairway passage, lending it a cool vibe. Street art, tile art, and tiled buildings can be found throughout Alfama. Keep your eyes open and enjoy as you ride or walk through the narrow streets of Alfama. Number 3. Visit the Baixa. The Baixa Pombalina is on the UNESCO World Heritage Tentative List and extends from the Praça do Comercio to the Praça de Dom Pedro IV, connected by the two main streets, Rua Augusta and Rua Ojea. After being completely destroyed by the Great Earthquake of 1755, Baixa Pombalina underwent a complete overhaul by the Marquis of Pombal. The new city was laid out on a grid plan and the previously standing royal palace was replaced with Praça de Comercio. The Rua Augusta Arch was built to commemorate the rebirth of the city following the 1755 earthquake, welcoming those arriving by sea. It is worth the five euros to explore the bell clock tower and take in some of the most spectacular views of Praça de Comercio and the Tagus River and gain a panoramic view looking straight up the Rua Augusta and panning around to the Castelo São João and the Lisbon Cathedral in the Alfama. When exploring the Baixa neighborhood, it is hard not to miss the stark contrast of the Santa Justa elevator architecture. Inspired by the Paris Eiffel Tower, it stands 45 meters high and connects Baixa with the hilltop Bairro do Cheado. Don't miss the purple Sofia sculpture left by the artist Super Linux and also the Pelican multimedia mural on the adjacent wall, said to be the work of Bordalu II. The iconic wave pattern Calçadas Portugues marks the historic Rocio Square, officially known as Praça Dom Pedro IV, whose monument is erected at the center. At opposite ends of the Praça are two bronze fountains imported from France and give an inviting feel to the Praça that is surrounded by benches and cafes. We prefer staying in Rocio when we visit Lisbon because of its central location to the old town neighborhoods and easy access to the Rocio train station, metros, buses, and trams. We have stayed at both the My Story Hotel Rocio and Figueiro locations and really enjoyed our stays. The rooms are nice and if you happen to face one of the praças, the views are amazing. A beautiful place to have breakfast near the southeast corner of Praça de Rocio is Confeteria Nacional. According to the signage, it was founded in 1829 and has been in existence for more than 180 years. When you first enter, there are pastry cases from which you can order. Or if you take the stairway to the right, they have more pastry cases upstairs and a beautiful dining room where you can order a full breakfast. We enjoyed a nice breakfast of eggs and avocado toast, and of course, a milled foyage. Located behind the Teatro Nacional at Rocio, Fabrica de Nata is one of three places where we try pastéis de nata. They are baked up fresh at the property, and it is a nice space to sit down and have a light meal. They have a spacious indoor dining area adorned with azulejos where we were able to sit down and enjoy a cup of coffee and a pastel de nata. 
We're here at Fabrica de Nata, just off the rest of the doors of Metro Stop. And uh, this is our third place where we're trying Pastel de Nata. So anyway, um, I like to add a little bit of cinnamon to... So let's um, give this one a try. I like the caramelization on the top of the Pastel de Nata. Um, so let's see how this compares with the other two. Mm. The pudding is warm. It is warm. Has a nice flaky crust. The cream. It's pretty smooth, but not as smooth as um, pastais de Belém, nor the Mantega. But I really think this has the best crust. Number four, Chadu. Chadu is another hilltop neighborhood above Baisha. Chadu is easily accessed by walking up Rua do Carmo from Rocio Square. It can also be accessed by metro or tram. One of the most significant structures in Chadu is the Carmo Convent, which now serves as the headquarters of the Association of Portuguese Archaeologists. It also houses a small museum. The convent was at one time Lisbon's greatest medieval building. During the earthquake of 1755, the roof of the convent collapsed. Rebuilding was planned but never carried out. Today the remains of the convent are a hauntingly beautiful feature of the Lisbon skyline. There are two areas to explore. Upon entry you will first encounter the open air central nave. It is a photographer's delight with blue skies and sunlight illuminating the walls and arches. At the end of the nave is the entrance to the museum. The museum was designed to hold important sculptural pieces from old ruined buildings, but now includes a highly valuable collection of historical, artistic, and archaeological pieces from prehistory to modern times. After visiting Carmo, reserve time to wander the streets, passing by shops and theaters and restaurants. Swing by the famous Largo de Camões, a stop on the Tram 28 line. Here you'll find a statue of the famous poet, Luis de Camões, surrounded by statues of other prominent personalities from Portuguese literature. A few steps beyond Largo de Camões is Mantecaria, famous for its pistache de natas. Stop in to conduct your own taste test of the pastries as we did. We're here at Mantega Fabrica and we're going to try one of their pastais de nata. This particular location is in Chiadu. So I'm going to first uh, take a little cinnamon. I like a little cinnamon on mine. So they're making them up fresh right behind us, but um, let me go ahead and give this a try. Mm. You can hear the crunch of the crust. And the filling is really smooth, creamy, not much yolk. Some of the fillings you get are kind of coagulated, almost like a custard, but this is real creamy. This is going to come in a close second to the pastais de Belém. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and finish this one up. You should try one. From Largo de Camões, head towards a Brasileira for a peek at the historic cafe. The cafe was a meeting place for Portugal's intellectuals, including the famed poet Fernando Pessoa, a statue of whom is found on the cafe terrace. Across from Brasileira, look for the statue of Antonio Ribeiro, nicknamed Chadu, for whom the Baiju got its name. Wander down Rua Garret, enjoy the shops and cafes keeping an eye out for Livraria Bertrand, the world's oldest bookstore, as confirmed by the Guinness World Records Certificate proudly displayed at the entrance. The bookstore, founded in 1732, has been updated through the years. It now hosts several vaulted rooms lined with shelves of books. Although most are in Portuguese, there are English language versions of the greatest works of Portuguese literature. At the back of the store is a small cafe, here you can sip a drink or sample a snack while you enjoy your book and the artwork on the walls. If you purchase a book at the store, 
make sure to ask the staff to stamp the book stating it was purchased at the oldest operating bookshop in the world. From Libraria Bertrand, continue down Rua Garrett to the shopping center of Armazan de Chiado. Small shops and internationally known retailers are within and around the Armazan. For a more upscale meal, we dined at Continuo Aviles, founded by the Michelin star chef Jose Aviles. Here you find Portuguese food with an international influence. For our meal, we enjoyed the deep fried green bean appetizer. Terry ordered sauteed vegetables with chickpeas, green curry sauce, and fresh herbs, while Lopaco ordered the sauteed scallops with mushroom risotto. We're here at the Michelin star restaurant, Continuo de Avalanche, of the famous Michelin star chef Jose Avalanche. I ordered the sauteed scallops with the mushroom risotto. And um, supposedly it brings a lot of Portuguese influence into it. But hey, the Portuguese make arroz de everything, so let's give this a try. Rice is a little bit firmer than when they use aquario rice. But the taste is really good. It's very creamy still. And of course, sauteed scallops, who could go wrong? Oh, succulent. Maravilloso. Number 5. Visit the Bairu Altu. Since 1885, a great way to get from the Baixa to the Bairu Altu is to take the Funicular da Gloria from Praça Restauradores. We've also walked the stairs from Rocio Station up to Largo Trinidad Coelho, but this was a view that was well worth a zap on our Via Via Jean cars. The Bairu Altu is located on one of Lisbon's several hills and escaped relatively unscathed from the 1755 earthquake. Miraduro de São Pedro de Alcantara is a must when exploring the Bairu Altu. As you pan from left to right, you can see the luxury shopping area along Avenida da Liberdade and views of Castelo São Jorge and Rocio below. The two landscape terraces dotted with sculptures presents an inviting atmosphere to relax and have a drink and take in the views. From the Miradouro, walking in the direction of Principe Real, you get a sense of a peaceful, upscale neighborhood. Imagine what it would be like to live in this barrio with views of the Rio Teju and the 25th of April Bridge. If you are in the neighborhood, we thought it was worth exploring some of the unique shopping venues in all of Lisbon. We wandered around the Loja Real Pink Palace pop-up where colorful crafts and clothing guide us around this wonderful renovated mansion, giving a very cool vibe to the shopping experience. The Embaixada is a 19th century neo-Arab palace that was transformed into an innovative shopping gallery where artists are focused on design, crafts, fashion, gastronomy, and culture. When you first enter, you are greeted with a grand staircase with beautiful painted walls and skylight providing natural light to this foyer. But as you proceed further into the Embaixada is where our eyes were captivated with the magnificent Arab interior design which graces the Gin Lover's Bar and Restaurant. Tired of classic Portuguese food and missing the ubiquitous Mexican offering in Southern California, we highly recommend Coyo Taco to satisfy that taco craving. They had a number of soft tacos and crispy tacos to choose from. We were also impressed with the variety of tequila and mezcal, so Lopaca tried the Coyo Margarita to accompany his Cochinita Peril Tacos. If you are a chocolate lover, be sure to stop into Bettina Caralo Chocolate Cafe and get your fix. We sampled a bar of salt and pepper dark chocolate and enjoyed a cup of hot chocolate and a delectable chocolate brownie. Unlike where we live in Lagos Town, Lisbon has a much wider range of dining options. For dinner, we ate at Maracreo, a few steps away from the Merador de São Pedro. What a great find as they prepare their pizzas adhering to the Neapolitan customs and traditions and use a refractory stone oven, of which they keep the temperature at 480 degrees C. 
For the antipasti, we had the parmigiana de melanzane with aubergine and fresh basil, and we ordered the maracreo pizza highlighted by the spicy ventresina sausage and accompanied by a spectacular salada de abacate with fresh mozzarella di bufala and swirls of aged balsamic. Paired with the meal was a Juda Tariga Nacional, resulting in two very happy tourists. The waterfront area of Caixta Soldra, although not technically one of the five classic neighborhoods, is another great area to enjoy, whether strolling along the Ribera de Naus or taking in the views of the 25th of April Bridge or enjoying good food and drink, here are a couple of places that are worth wandering by. Pink Street is an iconic Instagram photo op which comes alive at night with photo music and the many eclectic bars and restaurants. We went during the afternoon and we were enamored with the vibrant color and artistic feel to this street. Mercado da Ribera, known as Time Out Market, is definitely a place to visit if you are a foodie. Though it can get really crowded during the high season, it provides an opportunity to sample some amazing dishes from celebrity chefs without having to dine at one of their more pricey restaurants. From fresh seafood to baked goods, this is the widest variety of food offering in Lisbon, all under one roof. We were especially fortunate to have tasted from the chef's wing, salada de grau con bacalhau with creme de cenoura algarvia, and octopus with black sweet potato puree from chef Susana Felicidade, pachasu de porco preto from chef Vincent Fargas. Unfortunately, Enrique Sapasoa was closed this time around, but we've had wonderful dishes here as well. Wow, what an amazing time we've had exploring the city and visiting some of the UNESCO World Heritage Sites and sampling some of the local food and culture. We hope you found some ideas on planning your first visit to this beautiful city. Mahalo for tagging along with us. So until next time. Ate Paxima. And aloha.